Good afternoon, everybody. Please rise. We'll wait for the, the loudness of the chairs to subsist. Welcome to the Iowa City Noon Rotary Club. Good to see so many of you today. We are gonna get our meeting started with singing America the Beautiful. Oh, oh. There, there. oh beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. Amen. Because, amen, because God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, you may be seated. Thank you, Aaron. We are going to welcome Dave Siebert up, our greeting extraordinaire, to uh, tell us who we've got visiting as uh, guests and Rotarians. Thank you, President Ryan. It's and I appreciate the compliment, but it's really not that hard a job to stand out there. You get to talk to everybody. The best job in Rotary, in other words. Well, I don't see that I have any visiting Rotarians today. Did did I miss someone other than our standard Gary out there? Uh, and uh, so, if you have a guest that you brought with you today who's not a Rotarian, please come up front and introduce them. Good afternoon, Rotarians. It's great to see everyone today. I'm Eric Weiler. My uh, guest today again this week is Eric Johnson. Eric is with the Summer of the Arts. Please help me welcome Eric. Thank you, Dave. You've been an excellent greeter. My name is Usha Balakrishnan, and my guest today is Dr. Aparna Thomas. Um, she's a professor of political science and gender studies at Cornell College. And she's been with Cornell College for 18 years. And I will do the honors of introducing a guest of Superintendent Matt Degner. Uh, Phil Hemingway is here. He is running for Johnson County Board of Supervisors. Welcome, Phil. Tom Davies is still a guest. Hi, Tom. <laughs> he's been a guest with great attendance. He works at KZIA and he's a great guy. He's got his application in the hopper. So welcome again, Tom. Thank you. And welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Okay, we are going to roll right into Rotary announcements and Margaret Reese is going to kick us off with that. Margaret? If you have a announcement yourself, please make your way up here. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're well, it's great to see you. I have two related announcements. The first is that we are still entertaining interest from members who are uh, interested in the board of directors of this noon club. And if you are interested, please let us know before the end of the month by November 1st, you can email me, you can email Ryan, you can give us a call, whatever you would like to do. And I would like to say that I have served on this board twice. It's been a wonderful experience both times, terrific organization, terrific group of people. Um, so you will enjoy it if you uh, would like to participate. And the other one is that we uh, have um, identified, asked and been accepted by one of our members who is eminently qualified, who is a very active in service and very active in service for this club and fulfills many roles. Uh, and who is very enthusiastic and will be an absolutely tremendous president-elect and future president of this club. So I would like you to uh, put your hands together for Tara Manetos. Thank you, Margaret. 
and congrats, Tara. Welcome. Um, a few other quick announcements. We are going to clean up our highway uh, south of town over by Terry Trueblood. We're going to do a quick litter pickup on November 4th, 5th, whenever that Saturday is. Is that the 5th? Somebody with a calendar? Yeah, thank you. Good. November 5th, uh, 10 a.m., we're going to meet um, down there. We will put all the details of that in the notes because there's a sign up link. And we don't need a ton of people, but if we can get five or six uh, walkers out there to comb the highway, we've got a mile down and a mile back. It's pretty easy um, little litter pickup we've got. And then I would invite you all to check out our Facebook page because we've shared a link to a really cool video that uh, Channel 4 did, local Channel 4, about our tree planting out here just a couple weeks ago. And they have some really cool fit footage. Jesus Garcia's family is featured in there like five times. And uh, I, it's just really cool to see all the volunteers that showed up that day. And the fact that we knocked out 67 trees in under an hour was pretty cool. So check out our Facebook page for that. Um, and now I'm going to bring up District Governor Steve Winicky just a little bit early, who's gonna make a special presentation to our club. Might've been a surprise that I worked it in this, this quick into the meeting, but Governor Steve. Yeah. One of the things we've been working on for the last five or six months is preparing for two Rotary Foundation dinners. And uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going into that, but I understand that uh, Ryan and, and the members of this Rotary Club are not able to attend the one we had in West Des Moines last Friday night. We will be having our second one in Muscatine this coming Friday night, but I wanted to present a certificate of appreciation to the Rotary Club of Iowa City for an accomplishment within Polio Now for the membership year 2021-2022. And the certificate reads is presented as the Rotary Club of Iowa City has presented a certificate of appreciation for its financial support to the uh, campaign in Polio Now. Countdown to history campaign. Together, it will fulfill our promise to the children throughout the world that we will eradicate polio. Signed by John Germ, chairman of the, the Rotary Board of Trustees, and also signed by Shaker Meta, who was president of Rotary National last year. So, Ryan, congratulations. Let me have a camera. Yep. Can you get, make that out? Thank you very much. So, uh, I believe there were 20 clubs that qualified for receiving this certificate. So, not every club gets it. It's all based upon what members give generously to ending polio, polio, and we'll talk more about that later on, but congratulations to all the members in, in the Rotary Club of Iowa City. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And now we are gonna go back to our music uh, aficionados and bring up Devin and Aaron to uh, really bring joy to our hearts with some special music today. Take it away, guys. So the music committee met last week, and one of the things that was identified is that the reason we do this is because it's a good time, right? We enjoy doing smiles. So this week, we're going to put up some, some new words. You will probably recognize these words. Um, it is homecoming week. So we're going to do it right for homecoming week. We're going to do it once through. I'm going to play the melody on this gigantic saxophone. And you guys can hum along. Aaron's going to sing, and then I'm going to do the interlude. And that is your cue to come in with this guy. So you don't have to wait. You can sing right away. Yes. You're going to have two times. You would you would think I would know the words, but I you know just in case. I want to let every boy know the words fight, fight, fight for I want until the walls and rafters ring. Cheer, cheer for Iowa. Come on and cheer until you hear the final gun. The word is fight, fight, fight for Iowa 
until the game is won. The word is fight, fight, fight for Iowa. Very well done. Very well done. Are these things, these speakers on? There we go. I can hear myself. It was just so much applause. Nice work, everybody. That was beautiful. Thanks for pulling that off. That was really cool. We are going to shift gears now, and we have a goat rider. So Ian Carlson, he knows the drill. He's got three minutes to introduce himself to this fine club, and only three minutes. We will clap and applaud him off of the, the podium stage here if he goes even a second too long. So I'll be giving him some tips with the signs, and he's a pretty well rehearsed young man. So I'm guessing he'll nail this. I just jinxed him. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ian Carlson. I'm a financial advisor with Northwestern Mutual here in Iowa City. Uh, for me, Iowa City was never my first home. Home for me is in Northern Ontario, a little town called Sioux Narrows, Ontario. Some of you might know kind of where that is in the Lake of the Woods area. There's about 500 people there that call that home. Growing up there, the law of the land is very much, if a friend asks you for help, you help them. So when I was coming along with my practice here in Iowa City, looking for more ways to get involved with the community, Rotary was a perfect fit. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, my background growing up, again, being a Canadian kid, hockey was very a big part of our lives for myself and my brother. My brother still plays for the Hawkeyes here in his senior season. But my playing career ended when I was young, had some injury issues. And that transitioned me into my next role of officiating, where I'm still a referee for Division I, Division II college hockey, as well as the USHL and North American Hockey League. But where that got me into volunteering was when I was 20 years old, I was tapped to be the next referee in chief for Cedar Rapids. What that entailed was that I was in charge of training, scheduling, logistics, and developing the next generation of officials, even though I was still part of that. A year later, that responsibility came for Iowa City as well. So I handled both responsibilities for those clubs. And that's kind of been my experience, kind of leading me up to my professional career at Northwestern Mutual. Um, lived through this firsthand, what happens when you are not working with financial planning. This is something you never thought about. And what really jump started me into the business when I was 17, my dad was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I got to spend those next two years watching him struggle, watching my parents try to figure out how all this was going to work. And when he eventually passed away when I was 19, I spent that next summer sitting with all these advisors and the attorneys trying to help my mom through this next scenario. And for me, that was when I really knew, okay, definitely not going to be a doctor, probably not going to be an attorney. That's not what interests me, but this was the next area where I could serve. This was where I could be impactful for the community, have the impact I wanted to have with people. And that led me to where I am at Northwestern Mutual. Interviewed with just about every firm I could here in the Iowa City area when I was still in school. But as soon as the offer came for the role I'm in now, never looked back, I've loved every minute of it. So I think I'm gonna end my time a little bit short here, but that's really who I am. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing, Ian. That was awesome. Um, and good to get to know you a little bit better. Now we are going on to our newest tradition. My Rotary Moment is a way for us to express how much Rotary means to all of us. And as a side note, every time somebody does one of these, both Usha and Vern kick in 20 bucks for uh, the Polio Plus campaign. So thank you for doing that. We're very lucky today that Vern Folkman has agreed to give his rotary moment. So it's going to take exactly four minutes and 15 seconds, I think, um, for Vern's timing. So he's going to give that to you right now. Here you go. 
put this up here. And yeah. I... Thank you, Pre thank you, President Ryan. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to do this, but uh, it also makes me kind of nervous. So, but anyway, uh, it's supposed to be the Rotary Moment gratitude. And actually, as as I sat down and started thinking about this, you are the gratitude of my Rotary, you as members, because if I've gotten to meet almost all of you and you're all such a different kind of a person, you know, and you all have different fun things to tell us about. And so um, you're, you're the reason for my gratitude. So think about that. But I wanna read this to you so I get it done in four and a half minutes. So um, there are three things I wanted to cover is the reason that for uh, the fact that the Rotary Club of Iowa City knew in here is uh, such a pleasure to me. The first of these are the members, which I've already said, but getting to make new friends. And I want to thank Tom Selig for sponsoring me in 2001. So it's been almost uh, 20 years or a little over 20 years. So that's good. I was a member of the Marengo Club because we lit, I had a business over there for about 10 years. So I've been in Rotary quite a bit. Quite a while. A lot different over there because we only had 20 members. Anyway, uh, those of you that know me uh, know that I like people and being around them and getting to meet, communicate with them often. Coming to the Rotary meetings each week certainly gives me that opportunity to do this. And as you know, I have volunteered to be a setup person along with uh, my good friend Dave Siebert. Dave, you've been a wonderful help. And uh, Tim and I have a lot of fun talking together. Uh, so anyway, we, we come early, set up the forms for you to sign in and put the badges out and get the flags ready and all that kind of thing. So, and then I get to hang around the table and meet you as you come in. And that, that really pleases me. The second thing I really enjoy is serving as a board member. And we need some board members right now. So think about this. Eventually, and I was eventually became president in 2011. Again, attending the monthly board meetings was a good chance to communicate with the board and make new friends. I would encourage all of you to become a board member at some time, even president, if the opportunity arises. And I wanna thank Charlie Funk and uh, understand he's getting home this weekend. So that's good. Uh, Charlie was the one that nominated me and called me on the telephone and said, would you, uh, would you like to be president of this club? And I said, oh boy. That's quite a responsibility. I don't know if I can do that, but he was so consoling and so encouraging that I just said yes. And I had to follow a guy by the name of uh, Bernie Kramer. Well, I'll cover in a little bit here. So anyway, um, as I mentioned, Bernie was right before me. Each, each of these presidents had their own style and Bernie's style was dry humor and a bunch of stories. And you had to listen closely to catch the punchline. And uh, he was such a hard act to follow because I wasn't talented like that. So anyway, Bernie, thank you for helping me. And Bernie and his wife and I went to the Montreal in Canada and, uh, national meeting, National Rotary Convention, and we had a blast together. And, I, I, and we really had a, some good food too. And Orleans, New Orleans too, but yeah, that time I didn't hang with you as much because I had my wife with me. <laughs> anyway, I also, um, uh, as, as I gave up my presidency, uh, Nancy Colors, the former uh, Chamber of Commerce, was the next president. She was. Uh, she had all her I's dotted, all her T's crossed. She was a very good leader. And uh, I, I really like Nancy and Neil uh, a lot. And then um, I had the pleasure of nominating Ty Swingleback in 2015 to be president. And she uh, had to have the responsibility of the 100th anniversary. And I know Ray Munson, you was a, a big part of that with planning the program, but she did an excellent job of leading that and pulling it off at the Memorial Union, we had a great crowd and a great time that that evening. So, 
Other presidents which I had the pleasure of knowing since I've been president was Jody Braverman, Bruce Cout, Usha Bala Christian, Mike McKay, Steve Quigley, Jim Conard, Barb Thomas, Eric Weiler, and now, of course, Ryan, our, our current president. And each one of them has a different style, and that's what makes the Rotary so interesting. And we want to thank them for that, too. And the last thing I want to uh, cover is Rotary Foundation and how much it adds to being a Rotarian. I'm currently your foundation chairperson and enjoy having serving uh, that part of the arm of Rotary. And without the foundation, we as Rotarians actually couldn't carry out our motto because our motto is making the world a better place. To do that takes money. And uh, Rotary is famous for getting polio under control. And uh, along with the Bill Gates Foundation, we've almost got it licked. And just a sidelight on that, Bill Gates Foundation just donated recently $1.3 billion matching our money two to one. In other words, if we give a dollar, he gives $2. Wonderful uh, situation. Foundation also allows us as members to be part of helping with education and the world programs such as providing clean water, food, and health care to all parts of the world, and to those people that can't do that themselves. And so uh, I encourage you to become active in the foundation if you can. I know you all give $100 when you join every Rotarian every year. And when you can, I would encourage you to become a Paul Harris Fellow, Paul Harris Society, a major donor, and then eventually uh, when you make your funeral plans, put Rotary in your, in your uh, donation for, uh, as a benefactor. So. I again want to uh, just say I, I'm so happy to be a Rotarian. I'm so happy I, I, I know all of you pretty much personally. So thank you very much, Ryan, for letting me do this. Thank you, Vern, and thank you, Usha. You are a woman of your word. Our uh, our treasurer loves cash coming in. So. <laughs> um, now is the time we are going to introduce our program. And uh, Steve Winicky is our district governor here this year. And we're very lucky to have him presenting to us today. Um, I'm gonna give a, a real brief introduction as uh, I've been told he will cover some of these details. But he's been a Rotarian since 1996, um, been a member of three different Rotary clubs. So a lot of good experience uh, with different clubs and how they operate. Um, he's currently a, uh, or is a graduate of the RLI, which hopefully you all know is the uh, Rotary Leadership Institute. Um, and he served in numerous roles uh, at his church, Knights of Columbus, a uh, long time in the Iowa National Guard. So thank you for your service. Um, he did retire in October 21, luckily, because this district governor gig is uh, pretty time intensive. Um, he was a human resource manager in a private duty home health care agency and uh, is very happy to be retired and giving all this time to Rotary. His wife, Brenda, uh, very much along this journey with him, is a retired elementary school teacher with 38 years of teaching in several different school districts uh, in the Ankeny and Des Moines area. So we are very lucky to have them with us today. I will go ahead and welcome District Governor Steve Winicky to the podium. Ryan, thank you very much for the warm introduction and it's uh... I would like to say it's like coming home again. Um, I will tell you that I have a lot of fond memories of the Iowa City community. Um, I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the family and friends that I have in Rotary. I'm looking out in the crowd and I see so many wonderful inspirations to me because I wouldn't be standing here today without a lot of other great friendships and fellowships and, and coaching and mentoring and training along the way. So. Uh, maybe I'll be a little more um, nervous today because I'm talking to people that I know very well. And so hopefully it doesn't make it harder for me, but I'm really glad to be here. Brent and I were just here uh, on Monday 
to address the Iowa City Downtown Club. And so it seems like we're, we're uh, close to a lot of our homes uh, that Brent and I experienced. So my home is, uh, my hometown was West Branch. I graduate, graduated from West Branch and I see some West Branch, uh, very close friends of mine that, are, that surprised me to be here today. I don't know if they knew I was speaking. Maybe, maybe they didn't know and they were expecting some better uh, uh, person to be making remarks today. But I will tell you, it's very, it warms my heart to be here. 26 years ago, I joined my Rotary journey with Iowa City Thursday Noon Club. This is my home club. This is where I cut my teeth in Rotary. And at the time, I didn't have a choice. You know, most people have a choice in what they're going to do in their life. But when I signed on the dotted line and swore my hand in Iowa National Guard to work full time in the Active Guard and Reserve Program, working for a major general by the name of Warren Lawson, who, if, you, if that name rings a bell to you, he was an outstanding uh, football player at the University of Iowa, and he was a Rotarian in this club many, many years ago, and God rest his soul, he's not, no longer with us. But when I took on my full-time job as a intermediate level captain, he came and visited with me and he said, I know you realize the importance of serving your community, and boy, do I have a great opportunity for you. I expect every single intermediate and senior leader in my organization to serve in a civic service organization. And I think the Rotary Club of Iowa City would be just a great fit for you. It worked really well for me as a student and an athlete. So I was pretty intelligent. I was drinking the Kool-Aid. I understand what I needed need to do. So I was voluntold that I was going to be a Rotarian and he was going to keep track of me as well. So I'm really appreciative of those people that had enough confidence and uh, provided me with an opportunity to join Rotary. So my wife is going to be looking at me the whole time and I'm trying not to look at her because I do have a script and I have a tendency to go off script because I think I can add some more humor and volume. And, and yeah, she's already told me so many times, you are not funny. So it's not working for you. So I'm gonna hit, hit a few of the highlights. Um, do we have slides? So um, both my parents worked their entire adult life at the University of Iowa in hospitals. And so I grew up as an Iowa Hawkeye fan and, and some of my West Branch friends are out here shaking their heads saying, what the hell is Steve gonna say? It's gonna get himself in trouble. Uh, what I want you to know is that I loved my University of Iowa experience and I loved hearing um, your board member who was playing this out tenor, or, uh, baritone sax, excuse me, I played that instrument in high school as well. So I have fond appreciation for not only the Iowa height fight song, but also for the Barry saxophone. So great job. And, and I was in the back, I was singing, probably louder than some of the rest of you out here. So as a loyal Cyclone fan, I'm here to tell you that you can teach dogs new tricks and you have loyalty. So as I mentioned that I, I, am, uh, I, I am still bleeding black and gold as long as they're not playing my Cyclones. Um, and I would have probably went to University of Iowa had they had something that I was really passionate about doing. And, and uh, with my agricultural background, I became a high school ag teacher and FFA advisor. Uh, with earning my bachelor's degree from Iowa State. So that's what I'm passionate about. And I've been, I feel like I've been an educator uh, my entire adult life. And so uh, I, I take that true, true to heart. Um, my wife, Brenda, grew up in Esterville. She's a Northwest Iowa gal um, and um, 38 years of teaching first, second, third grade teachers. And, and I think we make a pretty good team. So are you advancing the slides like three slides ahead, trying to get me to move along because I can't see what's behind me? Uh, the previous previous slide you saw were some photographs of Brenda and myself and with our family. We have a blended family. We're both in our second marriage celebrating our five children, our eight grandchildren. And, and uh, with this year, it's making it a little more challenging for us to spend time with, with all of them. But that's what our family looks like. Next slide. So one of the things we talked about during the board meeting today prior to our, our new meeting was that we are here to celebrate women, young women, empowering women, and empowering girls. And I know that was a theme that your past district governor, Alka, last year really pushed down strongly. I will tell you that the woman that's up here from Ontario, Canada is 
one great example of a leader. And I will tell you, if you have had the pleasure of meeting her, she has been in our district in this part of the state of Iowa many times over the last 12 years and is a great inspirational leader that she knows how to grow and lead an organization internationally. And I'm gonna show you another slide a little bit later. And she's setting the example of those other international civic service organizations and bringing us all together to do more collective good work in our communities. So Jennifer Jones was elected as a Rotary International president, first woman international president in Rotary International after 117 years of our rich tradition history since 1905. Can we give Jennifer a round of applause for her accomplishment? I will tell you that you're probably not gonna have an opportunity to meet Jennifer, but I hope someday that you have a chance to do that. Um, what we learned by going to the International Convention in Houston, Texas, is that we are still trying to get out of COVID and all the effects of COVID. And, and as a district governor, you would think that I would be able to have the opportunity to stand side by side with her and take official photograph for our leadership directory. And it just didn't happen. And she has her own bodyguard, entourage of bodyguards. So she's a mover and shaker and her bodyguards uh, kept even me as a low profile guy trying to get to her. But uh, we had specific instructions when we finally had an auditorium full of, of district governors from all over the world. And we were given instructions is that do not even think about rushing the stage to get your moment of glory, having a photo with your Rotary International president because there's bodyguards out there watching. Now, I don't know if they were packing a gun or not, but it was enough threat to keep us, keep us in line. But let's go to the next slide. Let's talk a little bit about what Jennifer's Imagine Rotary theme is all about. And you're gonna hear me use the word imagine quite a bit because it's extremely inspirational for where we've been and where we're going in the future. I will tell you that the Australian Aboriginal culture is designed that Jennifer reached out to not only with her brother, but also with other people to design this theme. So I wanted to spend a minute to talk about the theme. The elements of the theme design began with a circle that signifies our connection with one another. The dots around the circle represent people. And you'll notice there's seven because of Rotary's seven areas of focus. The circle and the dots come together to become or form a navigational star which serves as our guiding light. The solid line underneath is what is referred to as a digging stick and is used when doing hard work. Since Rotary members are people of action, it represents a tool for getting things done. You'll notice in the theme design, there are three distinct colors, purple, green, and white. Purple represents our constant striving to eradicate polio and you know, we're getting so much closer than what we were 35 years ago when we struck out on this journey that everybody in the world said, there's no way a Rotary and all the organizations teaming will ever be able to accomplish this. And we're proving them wrong. Green signifies protecting our environment that all of us know is our, our seventh area of focus and white is for peace, which is one of our core missions. The vision statement you see before you, I just wanted to point out, this vision statement is deeply important for all Rotarians. And I will tell you, we're not gonna spend a lot of time together going through this. You can read it, you've seen it, you know it, and you probably hold it close to your heart like I do as well. So our vision statement is very, very important for our Rotarians to, to know, and also very important for us to share with others to provide the opportunity with them to serve in this great organization. Next slide, please. The priorities and the goals, I'm only showing these because these are the four that I believe resonate with me the greatest that actually epitomize all the things that are critically important that the Rotary Club of Iowa City does as well as what District 6000 does of, of the members that we have in our organization. Next slide. You're gonna see those priorities embedded in a lot of the talking comments. But what I wanted to point out with this slide you see right now is that Jennifer Jones over a year ago when she found out she was gonna be our international president, she purposely found out who her 
other international partners were of these organizations. Now, there are a lot more international organizations that are posted up there, but the one thing that I wanted you to think about is that back in 1905, when we formed the Rotary Organization, these other organizations were not even thought of. Rotary led the way of all civic service organizations internationally across our globe. And so what Jennifer did is about a year ago, she reached out to the presence of each one of these organizations and said, what is it we can do together to make a difference in improving the lives and the communities across, the, across our globe? And the one thing they came across and finally decided they wanted to do is that they felt it was important to team together, together we can do more. And what they're asking each Rotarian and each of these service organizations and clubs and organizations do is work together, get to know each other, work together to do greater good for people living within your communities. Next slide. There are many forms of partnerships besides the civic service organizations. Just think of those people that you love and respect and you like spending time with. The partnerships that the photos you see here are members of action that are working to do good in their communities. One's in a, a, a community garden that produced over 46,000 pounds of vegetables and, and fruits that are all donated to a uh, food pantry in the Des Moines metro area. Another one, another photo is illustrating what Rotarians are doing for a landscaping project for one of the, one of the cities in our district. Another one is where Rotarians and guests are coming to help build a home for a family that was devastated with a tornado loss within our district as well. So those are examples. Other examples of partnerships, sky's the limit. Think about the churches, your work, your schools, Think about who might appreciate getting an opportunity to serve with us, and that's what I'm asking you for to think about. So membership engagement. I've always focused on, and I know Rotarians have always focused on the importance of networking and extending our reach to invite people to share in what we take for granted. Last year, Shaker Meadows, as our international president, mentioned that he wanted our members to follow his initiative of each one bring one. My slogan this year is, Get your ask on. Get your ask on. What I'm asking the Rotarians to do, each Rotarian, I'm asking you to think about those people that may be a family member, a friend, an associate you know from church or school or whatever your, whatever your profession is. I'm not asking you to go out and do cold calling. I'm asking you to, to invite those people that you know that you, you love I know you, you're here. You love your Rotary experience. You love your Rotary Club. Why wouldn't we want to share that opportunity with all the people we know in our lives and share that great news? So one of the things I want you to think about, would like you to think about is intentional and frequent member engagement through effectively communicating with your members. That was one of the challenges we talked about during the board meeting today. Whether it's a website, a Facebook, a personal face-to-face, -face, phone calls. What are the ways that you connect with each other to keep you well informed about what's going on? When you get a new member, so the guy that was riding the goat up here today, I love that tradition. When I talk about riding the goat with Rotary Clubs I've served in afterwards, they look at me like, what kind of country hick are you? And my wife, for the longest period of time, thought we really brought a goat in that you had to ride a goat in front of all the members. She knows better now. But I'll tell you, what are you doing to plant the seed? What foundation are you laying with that new member? Make sure you, that that new member has the knowledge and experience to set them up for success and take them under the wing with a sponsor and a mentor. And you need to coach them along the way. Make sure that new member gets involved in your organization right away. I will tell you that's where we lose more members in the first two and a half or three years of our organization is because we don't invest in setting that person up for success and retaining that member for a long time member. We also need to make sure that not only do we offer that opportunity for them to get involved in a committee or a service project, but we need to make sure that we listen to them so they feel heard, they feel appreciated, and they feel valued as an important member of our team. I wish to emphasize a few points that Jennifer Jones has talked about with all Rotarians. I encourage she. Jennifer says this, she encourages our Rotarians to be welcoming, take interest in our fellow members and guests, 
and make sure that they receive the comfort and care that they so richly deserve. Next slide, please. So I'll tell you one of the things that, um, that I've noticed in 26 years of Rotary membership is this slide here. And I don't expect you to be able to read all the words that are written in, in small print. But the one thing I've noticed is that many Rotarians never get what Rotary membership is all about. Now, my four years of Rotary here in Iowa City Club, I didn't have a clue what Rotary was. I could barely spell Rotary. But what I found out is that I found out in my next club in Johnston that I was a charter member of forming a brand new club. Oh boy, I learned a lot. And as time went on, I'm looking across the room right here today. There are several past district governors that are coaches and mentors. And it took me nine years from the first one that started talking to me until now before I finally drank enough of that magic rotary Kool-Aid to come across and say that, you know what? I want to get involved and I want to do more than what my rotary experience is in my local rotary club. So this slide is up here today to challenge you to think what, imagine what your life could be like if you had an opportunity to serve and grow and expand your wings to go to a spring training assembly or to attend an annual conference or go to an international convention. Think about what your life could be like if you learn more about what Rotary has to offer other than what this Iowa City Noon Club has to, do, to mention. And I will tell you that you're not gonna learn to the same level you can if you are only thinking that Rotary is what you experience here when you come Thursday at noon every, every time, no matter how good your club is. So I'm not talking down about being involved here. This is a grassroots level. This is where you cut your teeth and learn about the organization. But I want you to know that there's great opportunities that exist outside of your local Rotary Club as well. So two weeks ago, we had a um, open invitation for members to attend one summit, which is equivalent to our fall education assembly. What you see on the screen right now is Rotary Leadership Institute. And it's one of the premier training events that most of our Rotarians that have gone through this say is the very best educational value that you can get. Many past district governors, many assistant governors, many past presidents said if there was one way that they would learn about what Rotary has to offer, this is the way that, that they can best learn about how to, how to get that done. Now, I'm not trying to say that Rotary International doesn't get, do a good job of training district governors and assistant governors and presidents, but this is another vehicle of where, do, where you go to do that. We offer training one in the spring in Mount Pleasant, October 15th, just a short time ago. We're having another one on May 6th in uh, West Des Moines. So if you're interested in that, we have flyers where your badges were. Uh, take, feel free to pick up one of those on your way in, on your way out. As a past educator, Brenda and I both are very passionate about what we can do to move the stick forward for uh, um, improving the lives of young people within our communities. I will tell you last year was a very fun and inspirational way. I have heard for probably the last 10 or 12 years that I've been paying attention that RILA, which is our six week summer camp for high school youth to experience at Grinnell College. I went there as a, an advisor and also for a counselor last year and it changed my life in a lot of different ways that I was not prepared for. I came back home and told Brenda what I'd done. I, they were short nights. We didn't get much rest. And that's because not only the Rylarians, but also the counselors put a lot of time and effort in putting, in putting that on. But I came home and said, I've adopted some new grandchildren. And she looked at me like, what the hell did you get yourself into now this time? And I will tell you what I've learned is that those amazing young lives of the 165 students that went to Ryla throughout the entire state of Iowa, learn the greatest lessons of life of how to be a leader. This is what sets them up for success. So my plea is to, if you are not doing an active job of getting out and offering an opportunity personally through the schools that you have in Iowa City, please do that for the development of leadership with these young people. It is so rewarding. We, we owe it to them to bring them along. 
In addition to RILA, we also have a program called Interact, which is our high school level equivalent leadership uh, program. I know we have many strong Interact clubs within Iowa City location area, and I look forward to working with, with uh, Wayne Steen, who is a manager of our district for RILA and Interact too. So I encourage you to be very supportive of working and inviting and bringing our Interact high school students along as well. And the final of the three is our youth exchange program which we have outbound and inbound opportunities for youth. And we are looking at more opportunities besides the year long program. We're also looking at district to district exchanges and club to club exchanges also that may be less than a year as, as well. So we really believe that these are the way that set the, set the foundation for us to move these high school students into what's next in their life, where they can serve in an organization called Rotaract and then eventually become model citizens for our Rotary Clubs as well. Next slide. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about one of the things that um, we're gaining recognition for, and we're not doing this to gain recognition, but what we are talking about of, of offering al alternative meeting dates, times, places, and what you do. One of the things that our district is doing exceptionally well that our zone, which is our next higher headquarters above a district is, is that they are taking notice that our Rotary Clubs in our, in our district, back on July 1, we had 12 that were looking at offering an alternative date, time, and place and what they do for the same Rotary Club. We're also moving the ball down the field a little bit farther by offering opportunities for other communities to, to open and openly invite people to join Rotary. I will tell you that we now are working with 17 communities from that 12 in four months short time notice, we've grown five more clubs. And did you know that we are working on developing a brand new club in between, at the country club between Wilton and Durant to the east? LeClaire is growing a Rotary Club and DeWitt is growing a new Rotary Club. All three of those are in communities that Rotary has never been part of before. You know, by the way, we also have some existing clubs that have been working on this scheme for up to nine years, and we're leading the way. And it's not, it's not because we don't value the importance of our traditional clubs, whether it's a morning breakfast club or a noon club or evening club. We, all, we, we actually, to the east of you in West Liberty, we're going there tonight. That Rotary Club says, we got to look at this differently. We've had an evening club there for years, and now we have people from the community saying, if you have, offer an opportunity for noon, we will come and we will join Rotary if you offer that alternative date and time. Now, I'm not here to criticize what a noon club does. I, I belong to this club for four years. I love my noon club experience. I love my breakfast morning club in Johnston. I've been part of a satellite club for nine years and I know what it's like. We're not here to steal members. We're not gonna cannibalize members from the, the noon club here to form another club. And well, by the way, we're working on trying to form an evening satellite club for the benefit of all people that live in the Iowa City, Porterville region and North Liberty as well. So those opportunities are out there. All we're doing is providing an opportunity for more people to get involved with what Rotary has to offer. And Brenda, my wife is a prime example. She's only been a Rotarian for three years. She would have loved to join Rotary before she met me. And no, she didn't. I didn't force her to join Rotary, but she was an elementary ed teacher and she could not leave the school. So we need to look for alternative ways we can be more inviting and more, more inclusive to people that would love to have the opportunity to work in Rotary. Next slide. I'm not gonna talk much about the foundation. Uh, Vern, thank you very much for your comments. Great, great comments. And I really appreciate it. The importance of every Rotarian every year of contributing $100 per year. You know, most people don't even realize that that $25 a month contribution come out of your pocket is, is going on. But if you can give beyond that, I encourage you to do that for the great works that we that it comes back to your community locally here in Iowa City, as well as, as globally on global grants that we work on. Next slide. I just want to point out a couple things about our In Polio Now campaign. Last 
April, we launched a new program called Polio Plus Society, where members have an opportunity to be recognized for their contributions financially and many, in many of the ways. I'm glad to, re I'm happy to report we have 73 members that saw the importance of donating $100 a year as a sustaining member to help eradicate polio. You know, the old saying is that we're this close. And let me point out a couple things that have widened that gap a little bit that you may or may not be aware of. Last night, I was on a conference call uh, with, I think about 74 district governors and, and zone leaders. And one of the things they talked about was the devastating floods that have taken place in Pakistan. A third of the population have been, have been displaced from their homes. Think about what that did to affect their water and their sewer septic systems and how that has impacted uh, our polio problems. Think about seven months ago when Russia invaded Ukraine and think about what has happened to their infrastructure that's probably caused a great deal of polio that, to be not only in that country, but elsewhere. Those are problems we need to overcome. And I could list many, many other examples, but donating to the Polio Foundation, Polio uh, Plus Society and their foundation is critically important. One final thing I really want to talk about. One of our signature projects this year is Brenda and I are really passionate about doing is we very much want to invest in our young people. So improving children literacy and reducing food insecurity are the two most important initiatives we have going on. There's a reason why we came up with this thought process. It's because we know that Rotarians care deeply for their communities are making a deep impact in improving children's literacy. And I could say improving literacy because it's not only affecting your young people, it's affecting people of all ages, all languages. We have melting pots of people coming to Iowa City and across our districts every single day. But I empower, I want to empower the individual members and your club, and I know your club is very instrumental in being involved in improving literacy in your community. So I wanna congratulate you for what you're doing for improving our children and their literacy, and also for helping reduce that food insecurity. And I know members in here are very involved with that. So I have one book, Ryan, this book is not to go to your children. It's not to hand it off to some grandparent for their grandchildren. So this is your, this is your token one book to plant the seed and have Rotarians and your club to do great works for, for improving on these two areas. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this other than the fact that we uh, have some great foundation dinners. I encourage members to be involved in, in your foundation and encouraging people to attend foundation dinners when we have them in the future. Next slide. And Brenda's going to come forward and talk a little bit about conferences. Okay, can everybody hear me? I think I'll be good. Um, we will have three district conferences this year rather than one. On your table, you have a save the date card that looks kind of like this. We'd like you to take that with you today. Um, we just listened to the members of District 6000 and they said, we wish our conferences were closer to home, took less time, less money. So that's what we're doing. So we'll be in Carroll, we'll be in Coralville, and we'll be in West Des Moines. We'd love to have you join us at any of those. Um, and what we're going to be doing is celebrating the accomplishments of District 6000. On the back of that card, there are some reasons we think you might like to attend. It'll be a lot of fun. You'll get some new ideas. We are gonna have door prizes. We will have silent auction and silent auction dessert items. Also the club with the highest percentage of people that attend, if you're one of those people, your name goes in a hat and somebody gets 200 bucks to go have fun on night on the town. You have a lapel pin on your table with the theme. You have an ink pen, you have a business card, and you have a half sheet with some important dates, we'd love for you to take those things with you today. And finally, the International Convention. We're gonna be in Melbourne, Australia this year. Last year was Houston. We're going a little bit farther this year. So if you're interested in a trip of a lifetime, getting to meet lots of Rotarians from all over the world, we'd love to have you join us. It's over Memorial Day in 2023. And now if anybody has any questions for Steve.
Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate your attention and thank you. Thank you so much, District Governor Steve and Brenda. We will conclude here today. We will be donating uh, to the Polio Plus Foundation on your behalf for uh, thanks to speaking with us today. So we appreciate your time. We will end the meeting the way we always do. And I've remembered the way the four-way test starts this week. So of the things we think, say and do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all I'm concerned? concerned. Will it we'll build, build goodwill good and better, and friendships? better friendships? Will it be beneficial be to all concerns? Have a great week, everybody. Go Hawks!